Hi all, I have an absolutely delicious and highly important game for Stoufles. Stoufles, <laughs> pardon me, Stoufles is my preferred pronunciation right now. So beef stew, kind of beef stew. Um, so this is against Ethereal in the TSEC Season 16 playoff. So four of the uh, engines who qualify for this playoff, only two will go through to the, the final, the super final this year. So this is a new structure for TSEC. You have these events, which even the new entries, the neural networks, they can eventually end up playing against the likes of Stockfish if they qualify. So Stuflez is one of the rising neural networks, rising stars. So it's going to be given uh, a, <laughs> a great time later if it can make it through to the top two. And Ethereal is a premier division in the past. Uh, engine TSEC engine. So what happened here in this game? So the time control is 60 minutes with a five second increment. The opening book D4 Knight F6. We have a King's Engine defense and the Simish variation. So stuff there's um, the Simish variation is the book given to both. And I guess this is more positional and quiet. It's more about the pawn structure. So less tactical than maybe uh, AB engines would prefer in general. Now knight b7, knight h3, this is a curious move, but it's justified here because that bishop uh, can't double the pawns. It's a good opportunity to play this move. c5, the end of the book. d5, we have queen a5 here. Uh, Kasparov has played b5 before in the style of the Benko gambit. By the way, rest in peace, Pal Benko. Uh, there, are, there are a few videos about Pal Benko on the channel. He died very recently and um but his legacy is always going to be with us in our hearts especially the king's engine players with black are going to be often employing b5 as a gamut transposing into the benko gamut and of course the benko gambit players his legacy will always be there for us chess lovers so anyway in this kasparov game kasparov actually with the black pieces managed to get active play with this um benko gamut style position uh, just for those interested, uh, I can take you through this game. This was against uh, Christopher Lutz, a 2580. Kasparov was 2805. This was in Horgan 1994. Um, so Kasparov getting good endgame pressure. So going even a pawn down. But the, look at the pressure. And he's collapsing the center with f5. That d5 is now weaker. This leads to some targets, a4. Uh, so black gets the pawn back and uh, still has the pressure with the rooks coming in and then taking on e5 and this end game now picking up a pawn and black's the one now a pawn up so Kasparov really uh, viciously used the whole Benko gamut concept to kind of destroy the white pawns there so great stuff there from Gary Kasparov that was with the very sharp b5 but it's probably hard to justify for most engines this kind of gambit style we have queen a5 instead from ethereal and Stoffles goes in for the classic plan, you know, get off the bishops, weaken those dark squares. Uh, we have knight b6. This looks to me not respecting the pawns in their interactions with the pieces. Uh, white play knight g5 seems much more justifiable now to just use the h pawn and not yet commit the king anywhere, just leave the king in the center. It looks as though tactically, hold on. Isn't there a big problem here? Knight a4. White just calmly plays rook c1 here. Uh, knight takes c3 is played. As an option, if knight takes b2, it turns out king f2, for example, this situation, uh, white can plow on with a very strong attack, as you might expect, like this. And uh, this kind of scenario where the queen tries to rescue uh, the king, uh, but rook cd1 prepares the maximum in impact here for, for hg and you get endings like this which are going to be favorable to white if white picks up d6 um, instead of rook ae8 if rook ad8 uh, fg there's actually a big threat here you can't actually play in this position knight takes h7 because if you can guess black to play there'll be knight g4 check uh, with that pin pawn and just winning the queen but if white plays very carefully here with the move king e3 it turns out white's winning here after knight takes h7 just avoiding that 
cheapo basically and why it's going to be crashing through so all these lines with night takes b2 don't seem to work as far as I'm aware night takes c3 b takes so letting a2 go uh, but first the rooks attacked in fact black's not interested in even taking on a2 okay so queen a3 king d2 offering a2 again and using the king to protect c3 if rook c2 this runs into bishop d7 with the big idea of bishop a4 so c3 is a big fixed target here for example this position and it's nasty uh, where's the rook going about dropping c3 so king d2 uh, queen takes a2 now rook c2 queen b1 this is as if black's play <coughs> You'd be forgiven to thinking this is is this like 19 aces Mephisto style chess with the queen winning material on the queen side. What's going on here? This is supposed to be a, a premier division engine, uh, one of the top rated engines in the world, and it looks to be playing a very very greedy game with the queen doing all this stuff. G4, very interesting move. G4, and now we have. Bishop d7 and the point of g4 is sometimes bishop g2 so vacating that g2 which would hit the queen but now f4 believe it or not uh, so this has got a big idea of e5 to press on that knight so queen takes h7 as mate now so if knight takes g4 queen takes h7 as mate and if bishop takes g4 there's a lot of fun in games with bishop g2 here which hits the queen the queen moves then there's e5 and this position is um, is going to be crushing now you might think ef but the engines come up with even more sadistic plans with rook f1 and even king c1 here so the idea of rook f6 will be uh, mating if if the bishop dared to take the rook it's going to be um, and if we get this position with that encouraged then we get this rook f6 which ends up mating after d6 that takes away the escape score or winning the queen horrible things happen uh, if black's best is to give up the queen then that shows the devastation that could result so yeah bishop takes g4 doesn't do well knight takes g4 definitely leads to a mate in one e6 as another example there's just e5 the knight's getting nudged away if it doesn't move bishop d3 protects c2 and hits the queen if the queen takes here then e takes and black's best given the form pawn now queen g7 queen h7 would be to give up the queen and that's a total disaster of course so uh, after f4 black played e5 uh, we have f takes which nicely opens up the f file so things are not looking good bishop g2 for black uh, hitting the queen queen b6 rook f1 so there's a constant threat of rook takes f6 and queen h7 now the rook gives f8 to the king so f takes the, at least the king's got f8 we have a beautiful move here white to play really crushing attacking move taking away a lot of counterplay possibilities can you guess if i give you five seconds i think this is really a star move myself very difficult to guess this is not an easy one guys 500 points if you can get it King c1 it factors in squashing black's counterplay here white wants to use the rooks on the f file but also with king c1 it even niftily supports not just this but this an eviction notice for the queen to get away from the b file just in case the queen is interested in queen b3 again so for example if we played rook f6 this doesn't work very well uh, after bishop takes g4 black's doing well there so that's that's just no good to play rook f6 so king c2 uh, brews things up further we have a5 which does give a, a technical resource sometimes a rook a6 sneaky for f6 sometimes if bishop takes g4 here the key move is bishop h3 and if takes queen takes and this is pretty devastating rook b2 eviction notice Rook takes b7 and things crash through. Knight takes f7. This is just crushing, absolutely crushing stuff. And it's absolutely winning there. And uh, if instead of bishop h3, by the way, if um, rook c f2, you might think, then we see the counterplay aspect, queen b3. So it's important not to allow this because this scenario, black's getting with perpetual check. Important not to allow that queen to come for perpetual check. Uh, so. Um, great move king c1 so uh, 
So a5, not bishop g4. Bishop takes g4. Oh, I'm sorry, on bishop g takes g4, there's bishop h3. That's the best. Bishop h3. So uh, here, after a5, bishop h3 is played anyway. Uh, again, if we look at c, rook c, f2 here, queen b3. This position, black, <coughs> get some time here. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, to play the check and then queen e2 is checkmate that's horrible and if h3 here again it's annoying after bishop h5 this position black can actually play rook a6 believe it or not here and then that with perpetual check so that's no good either so it has to be played very very precisely queen bishop h3 for a moment not go all in yet because we want to actually kick the queen away from b3 and that's what Stoffelis does, kicks the queen away from any prospect of b3 with any sniff of perpetual checks, which, as we all know, perpetual checks has brought too many draws for the evolution of Lila in these tournaments uh, to everyone's like disappointment often. But no, the perpetual checks are being ruled out with this eviction order. Queen going back to d6, and now rook bf2. Uh, and now Queen F8 basically giving up. This is at move 25. Black may as well have just resigned with this move. It just loses material. There's nothing else for Black to do here, though. If Queen E7, Rook takes, and this is just mating. So, uh, yeah, Queen F8. Basically, Black's just completely lost here, a piece down. And in fact, the Rook can even go to the Queen side now, to B6. Gives up G4, hits E5. Okay, the, the rooks attacked it moves. So e5 and b7 attacked. Black decides to keep e5 for the moment. It's just absolutely just winning piece up. Uh, very nice move coming up to heal the pawn structure, offering the exchange to get loads of past pawns. That's taken it. It's just hopeless for black. Now it's clearly just patently hopeless. Black tries this f5. Okay, bishop h3 kind of pins the pawn. Rook a8 check is played. If f takes e4, then d6 check. The bishop striking across that diagonal. The pass pawns are very, very fast for white and absolutely winning here. So it's pretty diabolical now. So rook a8 check. King f6, b6, e takes. This is just desperate from black. If g takes, there's knight takes f5. Knight takes, sorry, f5, e5. So king h4 is desperately lost. Bishop drops back. FG, I believe there's a plus 10 for 10 ply rule before an engine is resigned. So here it's uh, coming up. Uh, it looks pretty much plus 10 to me though here, yeah? but it has to be for 10 ply. Um, or is it going to checkmate? It might actually be going to checkmate in these. I've just realized <laughs> it actually it does carry on for a bit. Yeah, that looks to me not the 10 ply rule, but rather win by checkmate here. For the map, the map change rules actually on this in TSEC. So, checkmate. Yeah. What a crush. Wow. Uh, Stoffles lets uh, FRL look like Mephisto Challenger back in 1980, winning pawns on the queen side, neglecting the king. This is how engines used to play, isn't it? <laughs> they just used to grab material and used to just checkmate them. That were the, the the good old days, nostalgic memories. So yeah, but yeah, it was very important for White to play very very carefully, serve the eviction notice to the Queen, not be too quick to capture on f6 to allow any counterplay with Queen b3. No sniff of any perpetual check. Also, in some of the variations, White has to tread very carefully if fg where the King is has to sometimes wait again, going to e3 to avoid cheapos. So the alignment principles there. You know, rooks against kings, or rooks here against kings, or queens coming to b3. The alignment principles are, are, are the thin layer over the, the raw tactics, which need to be navigated carefully against. So we see that in the variations as well, um, how white would demonstrate wins. So a fantastic win. And now, Stoffles has actually qualified along with Scorpio, not Scorpion, I got this wrong. Scorpio is another neural network. So there's going to be a load of neural networks in the super final. This is going to be like one of the most exciting neural network versus AB 
showdowns in the entire history of computer chess coming up. So check out TSEC in Google. Do TSEC chess, TSEC space chess. Get on there and start chatting with others. This is the neural network revolution. By the way, two sci-fi's uh, X Machina I saw recently. If you want to, uh, the the personification, the the humanization of uh, AI might, might put you off though in X Machina or the film Her. Those are my two sci-fi picks for you. If you're a sci-fi fan, check out those. I think the underlying technology is hinted in both to be neural networks. Well, one more strong than the other. But yeah, this this is going to be a neural network rich final, and I'm very happy. Stoff has has already influenced my play. I'm already thinking about outside past spawns a lot more now. I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot we can learn from the neural network approach to the game, I believe. Okay. Thanks very much. Oh yeah, by the way, if you want to play me and other YouTubers, check out that bitly link. Two capital Y, small V, small A, five capital M capital B, like in five megabyte. Thanks again.